Hello, hello. How's everybody doing out there? A little YDBT Daily coming at you, even on vacation. Vacation. Oh my God. This has been like the most um, work heavy vacation I've ever had in my life. So today, um, I'm going to um, go over a video that became I became aware of in the last, I don't know, day or two. When I've been talking about illuminators, because I typically or generally have been saying that in the last you know, a couple of weeks that I don't trust any after aftermarket shop to build your motor. I don't trust literally any shop to build your motor under 12 or 1300 horsepower. I say buy an illuminator. And if you want to get after it in a more extreme capacity, then you should really do a lot of vetting and do a lot of research before you send your Coyote or 5.4 or 5.8 or any overhead cam motor off to get built, regardless of who you've heard or regardless of who you've whatever, you really got to do a lot of research. But if you're going to stay under 1,200 horsepower, Illuminator, Illuminator, Illuminator is what I, I'm gonna going to suggest. And I came across a video that American Muscle did way back in the day showing you the assembly of an illuminator and i thought hot diggity dog would you look at that and a video showing god damn it this thing just fell apart hold on kids oh my god oh my god my soundboard fell apart like it's like my life like this soundboard is like my motor it's like you think you have everything figured out and then you know you find out someone put the 10 and the 9 caps in the wrong spot and it all goes to shit so we're gonna go over that video showing you why an illuminator has way better build quality than any shop can give you under under 1200 horse but not before mr bill o'reilly says hello to the people okay. we'll do it live okay no. we'll do it live fuck it do it live i can i'll write it and we'll do it live <laughs> fucking thing sucks it does suck now i'm gonna hurry up to this because i am going to carry the spacex launch of falcon heavy live we got two out of solution, two out of solution, Rami Saidang, allá abajo, jodiendo con los motores. Two out of solutions. Race Motive, they're, again, posting a bunch of shit about his Porsche. <laughs> I love that guy. Dave is a good guy. Uh, not Dave, I forget his name. Who cares? It's Race Motive. He didn't have performance, he didn't have performance.com, he didn't have performance. Check him out. Mention the peasant chat, YDBT Daily. Mention YDBT at some point or another. And he might hook you up with, I don't know, 5%, 10%, a shirt, a hat something Bart farm i might be looking at fucking 5.8 pullouts at this point i mean why not just buy a 5.8 pullout two four upper 10 percent lower stock cams and live at 900 like a homosexual the part farm.com conforms conforms.com ultimate header ultimate header on instagram ultimate header everywhere ultimate header in your car in your swap you name it put it on <laughs> pmas nick james and pmas the same math curve on every single 120 millimeter cold air intake. PMAS fender wheel intake is the best intake. Period. <laughs> Calmer transmission. Calmer transmission.com. I was supposed to go up there this week, drop off the Corvette, but no, I'm here taking apart a fucking GT500 motor because I am un pendejo that trusted a little too much. Real quick, I'm going to say hi to the people and then we're going to watch SpaceX launch a rocket for about seven minutes and then we'll talk illuminator stuff we got um leon phelps monty 540 paul pontu chase joe swish triller gto pito chiquito do shit more pews more booze craig walls mr billet noonan himself you know who's not having trouble with motors hey craig walls let me ask you a question since you have bought your billet noonan for fifty thousand dollars how many issues have you had with it carter's tv robo style maki mock miguel we got rcsv ricky b lavesh oscar hernandez coca-cola maki mock uh, Kellen Stocks, Joe Jackson, Brian L.T. Cobra, Izzy R. Dixon, T. Skorsky, Zach B., Zach B. again, Gregory Upvich, um, Good Sound Deal, Alex, you don't even know, Coca-Cola, Mini Bag, Brett LaSala posted his car on IG, cool, I don't follow him on IG, Zach B., Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola again, L says I'm broke, Matt Oliver, Any Black Betty, Coca-Cola again, Christian Duran, Mike S., Coca-Cola again, apparently Coca-Cola is just, has nothing else going on in his life, it's all good though, I love you very much. We got Jake, your Khalid, Subuwawi, holy shit. Elva Galarga, Arturo Mosio, Pookie sliding on the ops, Nat Jew, Rican 5 0, YouTube, corrupt, anti free speech, Josh Roy Heath, Travis, infamous S550, Edwin Rosaro, Venom Racing, Billy Bamba, Capcom Racing, Boosted, Michael Hadziki, Great Escape, the Black GT500, Mendoza's, Mendoza's again, Grandi Maki, Auto, 
Coyote Cody, Michael Hadziki, Adams, Bryson with Tony Dominguez, Cortese, Gabriel says 10 and 9. 10 and 9, baby. 10 and 9 caps. Tanner McMalik, David Glassroof, Coyote, RPGGT, Paul Pontiu again, Mr. JD Swag, Mendip Thing, Jared Wells, Milton Perez, Ashley Fox, Butcher, Michael, Michael again, David DC, Perro Grande, Keith Bush. Glass from Coca-Cola. Craig Wall says, haven't had enough runs on it yet to have any issues, but stay tuned. Coca-Cola, Charlie Vega, Tyler. Okay, guys, if you are on the East Coast right now, there is a delay. Get outside. Look east. If you're in Florida, South Carolina, Georgia, North Carolina, and maybe in the Washington or Maryland area, if you are close to the water, go outside right now. Falcon Heavy is about to launch, and it's about to make some freaking noise. I'm gonna I'm gonna carry it live because I'm a space flight freak. Check it out, Falcon Heavy launching right now. There it is, ignition. Oh, this is so cool! And lift off of Falcon Heavy. Go Sir. USS F-52. Go X-37B. Let's what's, listen in. What's in this rocket is an experimental aircraft like an airplane shaped thing x-37b it's like a spy plane from like Northrop grumman or whoever whoever the fuck so they're gonna basically go up ex the two side boosters disconnect and the side boosters will land back at the launch site and nsf please don't you know copyright my shit you 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 guys steal spacex's stream so don't steal my shit i'm actually promoting your stuff hey turn the volume up Remember, there's a spy plane on this thing, like a space spy plane, the X-37B. I think Lockheed Martin. Oops, sorry, sorry, sorry. So could you imagine your SpaceX and Lockheed or whoever comes up to you and goes, hey, we want to launch a, um, a spy plane uh, on one of your rockets and put it up in a crazy elliptical orbit. Could you imagine how much money they get to charge us, the, 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 the taxpayer, to get that sucker going? Nice shot. Oh, yeah, great tracking, bro. <laughs> so if you're outside right now, guys, East Coast, get outside. Look at this thing. So if you're not a space flight nerd, I'm going to tell you what's happening, right? The higher it goes into the atmosphere. There's Max Q. Maximum dynamic pressure. The higher it goes into the atmosphere, the wider the, wow. fl the flame looks. it never gets old, does it? And the reason it looks so wider is because there's less pressure in the atmosphere. Cool note, Falcon Heavy center core throttling down, and just seeing the difference in plumes between the side boosters and the center booster. And now, as the vehicle the ascends expansion. into thinner and thinner atmosphere, yeah, that plume expansion is truly magnificent. What a beautiful launch. So, what are we going to see next, Alex? Well, next thing we're going to see is going to be booster engine cutoff, BECO, uh, booster separation, and then they're going to start the boost back burn on the second, on the, <laughs> boy, on the side boosters, and the center core will ramp up to full power and continue pushing the second stage into near uh, space. We're approaching that moment here. Excellent. Let's keep it on. I'm out blown the away that the boosters separate boosters and come back. Like they actually turn on the fucking engines and head back to Florida. And there we go. Beautiful. God, it's just so cool how they fly past the center core like that. So amazing. It's and watch out for the for the nebula. Yeah, here we go. Hopefully we see that on the left hand side there. Oh, look at Bingo. that. Oh my god. You can hear the camera clicking away. I, I wonder who that is. Maybe somebody at the press Look site. That. that is beautiful. That is both of the side boosters. Their plumes interacting with the second stage plume. The, as, the center core. Yes. Th thank you. Center core. She's I, even larger. It's yeah, an even right. larger plume. Because right. it's nine engines against 18 engines, I guess. No, not 18. Oh, boy. Uh, six engines. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> absolutely yeah. beautiful stuff so it's what amazing. i get it maybe you guys don't care but god damn it this is what keeps me alive right now <laughs> off on the center core right 
Yeah, so right now we are approaching main engine cutoff. The center core is burning for a whole minute after the side boosters. It is approaching Miko, main engine cutoff. It'll separate from the second stage. We'll obviously not get those onboard views from SpaceX of the second stage because it's spooky space playing and <laughs> things like that. But uh, definitely hoping to get a successful mission out of this second stage as usual. And then you can see we're approaching Miko. There it is. And stage sep, any second now? Wow. Bingo! And turns on. Okay, let's see that MVAC start up. Regular MVAC, <laughs> no stubby. And there it is. Excellent. There you go. And you can hear people at the press site, I believe, oh. cheering. Absolutely so, wonderful. Yeah, you stuff. gotta you gotta understand all these people back here are responsible for a spy plane that just got launched into space. So they have a lot riding on this mission because it's a Lockheed Martin, I believe Lockheed Martin, like Skunk Works crazy thing. We have the return of the boot. And I guarantee nobody in this crew put a 10 where a 9 should be and a 9 where a 10 should be anywhere on that rocket. Booms, uh, it's like a, what is it, a double, triple sonic boom? So It's triple, yeah, but two of them are very close together, so it's, yeah, it's a bit confusing. It's like... Boom, 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 or something like that. But either so, way, that's coming. So basically what's going to happen now, the boosters are coming back to Florida. They're, they're literally, they, they're, they, 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 they basically separated around, let's say, Georgia, and they turned around, <laughs> they, they turned on the engines, started heading back to uh, Cape Canaveral, and they're going to land back on the site, and that's what I'm waiting for. Once they land back on the site, which is about a minute and a half from now, um, you know, I, I, I'll go ahead and go back live and check that out. But again, stuff like this kind of keeps me going because to be honest with you, car shit, I'm kind of over based on my experiences. And again, I'm going to keep talking until I see the side boosters come back and uh, go from there. So yeah, um, I'm kind of blown away at the whole situation that I'm in. Um, uh, you know, I, I'm basically facing some kind of weird conundrum where I don't ever want to go through this again. So what I'm doing is I am documenting every single little thing so that in the event that you, you ever have this issue, you don't make the same mistakes I did. So I'm going to talk about that real quick. And, and once the side boosters start to land, I'm going to cut back to that and then we'll get going and we'll talk um, um, Illuminator stuff. So yesterday's 10 is not today's 10. I mean, I'm blown away by that. So anyway, you guys saw the video that I posted up, <coughs> me taking the valve train apart. And a couple of questions have come up, especially having to do with the intake valve. Ashley Fox actually spotted it, I think first, and a couple of others where they're like, hey, what the what the hell's going on with this um with this with the valves over there? Because the intake valve, oh wait a minute. Whoa, we gotta get back to this. Their boosters are coming back. And uh, I got I to gotta check that. The boosters are coming back. Look at that. The boost back. We'll burn. see the other shut off in just a moment. Leading me to think that these will be a little bit more staggered. Hmm. Yeah. Absolutely gorgeous. All right. So next up, Alex, is going to be the landing burns for both side boosters, right? Yeah. And this is interesting because this is sort of unique. Hang on. Or... Hang on. Sorry. Look, Ooh, at, that. look at that. That shot was cool. Wow. You can you, see the yeah. lights of the Florida Space Coast as the <laughs> boosters absolutely haul butt back in to the launch site. Gorgeous stuff. Sorry, what were you going to say, Alex? Yeah, these side boosters uh, will actually initiate the landing burns closer to the ground than usual because it's going to be a 1-3-1 one, one burn. They're going to ignite the center engine, then two other engines will ignite to be able to slow down really really fast and then they'll shut down and they're going to be coming down to the ground on just one single engine at the end of the burn but it's going to be a burn that is you know high pucker factor i guess <laughs> there you go that's landing here we go wow both boosters coming in good job Let's guys listen for the sonic booms they're very delayed the sonic booms Show the SpaceX feed, guys. What the fuck? Thank you. Look at that. Clean shit. And there you have it. That's why it's called 
rocket science because look at they're clapping, Absolute. they landed. That's why it's called rocket science because motherfuckers like us would never be able to do anything like that. So, in the in the video that I did, uh, took the motor part, a lot of questions came up, and a lot of people. You guys have eagle eyes. I you guys have literally gone holy shit. What happened here? What happened there? And you guys are very aware of what's going on there. And I'm really happy that some of you guys are understanding that. Once you start taking apart the motor, all of the, let's just say, trust is gone. Um, certain things I saw that made me go, why wasn't I called about this? Why wasn't I called about that? I would have happily bought new cams. I would have bought new exhaust. I would have done so many things if it was a question, but maybe the builder looked at it and said it's no big deal. But if I would have looked at it, I would have said that's a big deal. And I'm going to have some kind of issue with that. But hindsight is 2020. But I am so happy that I I took it apart and I'm able to see. You got a brother, Michael Hadziki. I'm telling you, you got to love SpaceX stuff. And you guys that are in the East Coast. You probably got a great, great view. So then I started thinking, you know, the build process is different with every builder. So the previous engine, and I'll just say it because it doesn't matter, right? The previous motor that was in Section 8 for four years and over, I'm sorry, seven years almost, since 2015 this car has been built, was built by NPR. And I had not had any issues, neither did the two previous owners with that engine. That engine was stout. It ran a great number. It went sevens, I think, once with the, with the previous gentleman, but it had no cage. It was you know, no safety stuff, and it was grudge stuff. So he, he's like the only one that has that time slip. So it was built by NPR local to florida npr provided about six pages of all of the measurements all of the piston to wall clearances the cam angles the cam type the lift the duration where they're indexed to an insane amount of information and that information was passed on to the new builder guess what i got back in terms of information nothing as a matter of fact, maybe y'all don't know this because I kept shit quiet. The motor showed up at power by the hour in a jacked up pallet. And luckily no damage had occurred. But the pallet looked like it was river danced on. And I go, did this homeboy not package this thing properly? And Jake looked at it. He goes, I inspected it, Alex. It didn't look bad, but it looked like it could have been tied down better. I said, Jake, when we sent it up, it was ridiculous. Like, super tight. I go, I know, Alex. But when it came back, it was as if he just shoved it on the thing and said, vaya con Dios. There was a cradle that went along with that engine. A $120 cradle that held the engine up. That thing was destroyed. When I put the engine in, the O-ring on the water pump was kinked. So I had a leak immediately when I pressurized the coolant system. So I had to replace the O-ring on the water pump. No big deal. So now people are going to go, now you're being nitpicky. No, now there's no reason to shut up about anything. So I was already a little pissed off that the pallet was fucked up when it showed up at power by the hour. And the O-ring was kinked because obviously there was no checking of that happening when the building was happening. The, the build process was happening. And then icing on top of the cake. The moment I went what, it just made no power and it just sucked the air out of my soul. Because I understand that... If I have to have the bottom end looked at, now I removed the pan today, I looked it over, there's nothing obvious, but it's a smart thing to send it out to get done. So I am asking the person that's doing my cylinder heads, I am almost begging this person to say, please take the whole thing. And I'm willing to pay you to check everything over, check the clearances, and maybe throw new rings at it. And then give me that bill, because that bill is gonna be presented to Homeboy, because I don't trust anything. He's not going to pay it. I know he's not going to pay it. But I'm going to say, this is what it takes to keep me off your ass, basically. And obviously, let the cards fall where they may. But at the end of the day, I don't trust anything that's going on with this motor. So because I don't trust anything that's going on with this motor, this is the reason I think I always said, Illuminator, Illuminator, Illuminator. Now, American Muscle did a video at Performance Assembly Solutions near Livonia, Michigan. And this is where they build the Illuminators. It's a 13-minute video. Hey, American Muscle and Justin Dugan, do me a favor. Can you tell them not to copyright my shit? I'm promoting your shit. So they go over there and they show him 
the build process for an illuminator. So I've been saying illuminator, illuminator, illuminator. This is a four year old video. So check out the build process on an illuminator. I'm gonna just glance through it real quick and we're just gonna talk about why I think an illuminator built by Performance Assembly Solutions is way better quality than any, I am saying any, any Ford Motor Builder aftermarket guy that isn't Ford themselves because of the process and the OEM quality of the build. All right. All right, Iran, so what's our first step here? So Justin, this is the inspection area where they take the bare block. We got con rods, we got pistons, we got a forged crankshaft. They go through all the measurement process, measuring crank bores, a rod bores, piston diameters, and all of that's put into a travel pack. And all that data then travels with each illuminator engine. Very it's cool. got the full, full history of the engine. So this is an illuminator SC engine that we see here going together, nine and a half to one compression for those turbo which I tell you not to get. I tell you to get the NA version, but I'm gonna talk about something else after this is done. Charged, supercharged guys, right? And these are really beefy rods, right? And that's the same exact rod that you guys use in your Cobra Jet application exactly, as well. Exactly, right. So this, this engine here is almost the same as, as our Cobra Jet short block. Nine and a half to one H-beam rods. We use a forged Molly piston. And the hardware's been tested in excess of a thousand horsepower to the tire, that's, correct? Yep, absolutely. In excess of a thousand horsepower, to the tire vetted on their Cobra Jet program. Name one engine builder aftermarket that isn't Ford related, that has a, let's just say, OEM, like, like, like they have a, a engine program for an OEM that gives you a, a warranty with the car. So they're doing their job. Oh yeah, oh, very yeah. cool. And all this stuff is done, not like old school days where you're using, you know, a small gauge and everything. You're going through. This, this is all air gauging, right? And then all the data is uploaded into, into their pinpoint system. So we have a full history for each engine. Each engine is serialized. And then that data then matches up with the serial number of the engine. I mean, again, all I have to do is show you what they do to tell you how great an illuminator is or show you. Coyote engine, correct? Yeah, we've got a fully inspected set of rotating parts. Pistons and rods are assembled. We got a crank, bearings. We've got everything serialized now. So the block has a barcode on it. The cart of parts has a barcode on it. Those barcodes have to match so that we've got the right internals with the right block. Okay, so they, they match everything and they go through a OEM style process of right. assembly. So they call this Operation 10 or Op 10. And this is where Andrew's gonna start loading the crank and the rods and pistons. What's really cool about PASS here is they have a mini assembly line and as each bolt is installed, it's torqued to spec and then the system doesn't allow him to move on to the next step until that prior fastener is torqued. Wow. So it gets rid of the whole human error. And they put a system in place to provide the quality that we've got here. Yeah, and you can see all the sockets laid out over there, the hex stuff, and basically the little light lights up, I guess, as he goes, correct? Exactly, and, and right. It doesn't allow him to go to that next socket until he's used the one prior. This is So not only do they have a process, but they have a Let's just say you got to do this first, then that first. So I don't know what engine shops are doing, but if a nine and a 10 can get misplaced, uh, I'm blown away by that whole process. But here uh, at Performance Assembly Solutions, when I tell you an illuminator is a way better motor to get than anything anyone can build in the aftermarket under 1200 horsepower or so, take my word, as like, you know, vetting the, the process and American Muscle, Justin Dugan went over there and actually showed you how it gets built. So unfortunately, I'm, a, I'm, in, I'm in a shitty position because obviously I'm very public and a lot of people are not going to want to deal with me because I'm public unless you do right by me. So I understand that whoever I go to probably doesn't want their name mentioned, probably doesn't want the drama. And I'm blown away by that because I can actually believe it or not, be a positive influence. But right now, I'm probably showing the power of the channel by saying, y'all know who built it. I don't even gotta say it. I'm just gonna show you what I find and I'm gonna just fix it and go from there. If there was an illuminator, if there was an illuminator for a GT500, I would have bought it. Cause I'm gonna stay under 1100, 1200. If it runs eights, I'm good, but there isn't. So I have to trust people in the aftermarket who put their name on parts, say that they actually built stuff when they didn't. Some people, and 
This is what blows my mind. In one of the videos, I said, unless you have the machines, I don't trust that you did the work properly. And somebody said, fuck that. As long as I trust my machine shop and I check the parts after the fact, then that's better for me for assembly. Okay, so what if your machine shop has the spring testing tool, the five angle valve job or three angle or four, whatever the fuck angle valve job, the seat and the, the, the lapping and the spring static pressure that you're supposed to put on and ships. Do you check that? Do you, you're telling me a machine shop that has all the specialized equipment to check valve and all this stuff and springs and stuff that you don't have. When you get it to your shop and assemble, you disassemble everything in the head and check his work? No, you are lying. You say, heads are done. I'm going to slap them on and hope that my machinist put the proper seat pressure in, put the prop, did the proper lapping of the valves, check that they were straight. Because I highly doubt that when you send a head off and get done and assembled elsewhere, unless you're assembling the head. Like if you're assembling the head, cool. Do, do you have the, the tool to check the spring? Whatever. So an illuminator, in my opinion, you should get the 9, I'm sorry, the 12 to 1 if it's Gen 3 or the 11 to 1 if it's Gen 2. Now this is the problem, the ring gap. The ring gap, the ring back, the ring gap. The ring gap on a supercharged version of the illuminator unfortunately is in low compression pistons so if ford offered a ring gap for supercharged applications in their na illuminator i think you'd be okay but honestly based on what i've seen even the na illuminator has had zero issues zero issues when boosted up to 20 pounds turbos or supercharged with 25 pounds or so and they've gone well into the eights. And if you put it in a Fox body that weighs 2,800 pounds, that's a seven second. You could do that with a stock Gen 2 motor. So if you have an Illuminator, you can go a lot further than with a stock Gen 2 motor. Hell, Motion Raceworks had a stock Gen 2 motor in their notch and it was a seven second car. And it lasted years and years and years. So I would just keep throwing stock motors in there. Or if you want something beefier, you can go ahead and get yourself into an Illuminator if you want to turn it up some. Now in that same video, they actually showed a motor that a lot of people weren't even aware that exists. It's called the, uh, oh, oh, this is the other thing that they do, sorry, the cold test. This is something that I don't think any other shop does. Do you know of any Coyote shop that does a cold test the like this? The exterior parts are all installed. We've got no spark plugs in here because we're gonna go into cold test. We're gonna prime the system with oil. Uh, he's gonna fill with 5W50, fully synthetic oil that we recommend for racing applications. And then he'll go into cold test and prime the system. This is a road race oil pan that we actually are gonna sell in the catalog. You know, the capability of the car is so great, we've had to make some changes to the baffling and the flappers in there to provide oil that never leaves the pickup tube, right? Gotcha, and a lot more capacity, right, as well. Right, we're, we're, we're running the engine cold. So there you go, cold, no plugs, no nothing, but they actually turn the engine to 600 RPMs in this custom machine that pressurizes everything, and there's uh, sensors, and they have everything being checked to make sure that it has proper pressure before it goes out the door. Show me one engine shop that isn't Ford that has this machine. Hold and checking the integrity of the engine, make sure it's good to go. And you're checking compression on something like this, which is your higher compression engine. You're looking for what, like 250, 260 per cylinder? Right, so this engine is 12 to one, and we'll, we'll see numbers probably in the 260 range for compression. So a cold engine test that tests compression, oil pressure, we talk about builders and oil pressure, right? Hasn't there been a couple of builders out there that build motors and they have 30 PSI at idle and they tell you it's normal? This bitch, I guarantee it's not normal. And they would say, this one failed the cold test. We'll go back. But what this motor is, is a 5.2. It's a 5.2 GT350 motor with a cross plane crank. This is not a 5.2 Illuminator XS. This is a Voodoo motor with a conventional Coyote crank, GT350 heads, custom cams, so basically think of a coyote with voodoo parts. Further in, we got some more progress Right, here. so we're at op 20, 
And what's really neat here today is we've got one of our road race engines, right? This is the engine from the FP350S. Similar architecture to a standard 5.2 and even the, the GT350, but with some subtle tweaks up top here. Right, so this is kind of like a 5.2 engine that you see in the GT350, but we run a cross-plane crank. And then we re-phase the camshafts for 5-liter firing order. So it's really kind of a big displacement 5 liter. But we got some hard lines coming off the head, which is something I don't necessarily recognize on a standard Coyote. Right, that is a unique feature. So we've came up with some balance tubes, we call them, and that balances the oil pressure left to right bank. So we want to prevent any starvation when you're really tossing this thing around in turn. Which is meant to be a road race engine, but fuck that, give me that and put it in a, in a Fox body and party. So again, when I tell you road racing, uh, when I tell you get a Ford racing illuminator, and stop fucking around with these built engine guys. If you intend on being under 1300 horse, I'm telling you, please, please take it from me, who has $10,000 in an engine that lasted 300 miles in three or four watt poles, never to make this mistake again, okay? If there was an illuminated version of a GT500 motor, I would have taken it uh, and put it in there a long time ago, but this is this whole adventure is gonna cost me probably $15,000 by the time it's all said and done when it should have just costed me, honestly, honestly, pistons and, and pistons and, and, and what the fuck, and, and, and a timing set, maybe six grand. Sorry, I'm sorry, what I got, I, trust me, I'm not happy with. So, this whole week, all I've been doing is working, just on my back, busting my ass, to getting you content. Tomorrow, the reason I showed that video is, I had a one and a half hour long conversation with Justin Dugan. That's right, Justin Dugan, tomorrow, 3 p.m. It's gonna air, had a great conversation. I think you guys are really gonna enjoy the conversation. He is one of y'all motherfuckers. He's one of us. I know you see him as a pretty boy talking all this shit, but I've known him in a personal capacity. And I said, this guy is gonna be right on the money. So once we got our schedules aligned, I sat down with him for an hour and a half, talked his history, talked his outlook on the industry. He talked truth. And I think you guys are gonna be uh, enlightened to this whole, to, to, to what he does, what he represents, and how he sees the future of, let's just say, catalog, you know, parts catalog companies like Turn 5 and American Muscle and all that stuff. Ring back for Boo should be, oh, 6,000 inch per bore. If Old Mate can't provide you a spring rate for each spring, you'd have to wonder what he set your ring gap to. I'm checking that too, mate. You convinced me not to trust Coyote Engine Builders. And you know what, Coyote Engine Builders? It's not my fault, it's your fault. It's your fault. When there's a failure and the and you trust the builder or the assembler, or let's say that the shop that's doing the motor work, the first thing, what's the first thing a engine builder blames when there's an issue? Guys, go ahead, put it out there. What is the first thing or person or people a engine builder blames when there is an issue with said motor the tuner the tuner the tuner the tuner maybe your injector phasing is improper maybe you need to hit the plus button on the fuel thing maybe you're running it too rich maybe you just shut the fuck up because why on a stock fucking car does it run great for three or four years and then the customer says hey it seems a little tired. Let's freshen it up. Sends it to you. Put some 300M shit in there. Molly pistons or diamond pistons. Port the heads a little bit. Stock cams. Put it in the car. And it sucks. And you blame the tuner. When that same tune has been on the car for three years. Living a happy life. And then what does the customer do? Puts a stock motor in there on the same tune. And runs the number. I am blown away that... That is the first thing they blame. So every single time I saw an engine builder tell you that, well, the oil pressure is a little lower at idle because I have certain, you know, I have, I have, um, what you call it? Custom specs for my bearings. It'll be fine once you rev it. No, you don't. A Ford Racing Illuminator turns on and it has fucking 60 or 70 PSI at idle. Stop it. Skip the super chat says Lava Roush. Zach Anderson says, your tune definitely put the cam cap on incorrectly. He blames two tuner or spark plug. This makes me want to put a small block forward or Gen 2 Coyote in my notch. Guys, the motor that's going in the Fairmont is a stock, basically OEM Gen 3 Coyote with Gen 2 heads and stock cams. Bye. You think I'm going to go out there and start hitting up shops and go, hey, I want to spend $20,000 with you so that my motor lasts 
less than a stock motor? Fuck no. Never again. You guys out there, take what this show tells you. Like, seriously, illuminator if you want to chill at peak 1,200 horsepower. Above that, vaya con Dios. Transmission guy blames the converter and vice versa. Dipshit shop said my six misfire codes were in the tune. Turns out the cams were not installed right. Wonder why, wonder why it failed. <laughs> Hit the plus button on the cam cap to make it a 10. You got that rapeseed built motor. Comes with a side of depression and self-doubt. Sorry, Alex. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to mention dude's name. I'm not going to mention dude's shop. I'm just going to tell you. I'm just going to show you what I, what I found. How many of you guys... Put your hand up. Put a little hand up. If you saw that that my, me disassembling the cam, the, 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 the keyway, the misplaced 9 and 10 on the cam cap and thought, what the fuck? And then you saw the oil on the intake cams and you go, did you, did you go, what the fuck? Like out of all people to get, I don't want to say botched because I don't know what happened. But at the end of the day, I wanted to see for myself, what am I dealing with here? And after seeing oil in most of the intake valves, a nick on number one piston, misplaced cam caps, I went, oh my God, what else could be wrong? What else could be wrong? I'm blown away. <laughs> Sam 5-0. <laughs> Fuck me. Alex, I blew my stock. Went AMS Racing Short Block, and no, I'm 16, PSI, 150 nitrous, two years for now. Alex, I blew my stock and went AMS Racing. I don't know who that is, Short Block. And, and no, I'm 16 PSI and 15, 150 nitrous for two years now. Okay, um, good for you. Um, after blowing my built Short Block, it was 7K, less than 100 miles. I've thrown stock Gen 3s in it. Just rev it. Revving the engine magically fixes things. Bro, I I'm telling you, it it's unreal. Craig Walls raises his hand like, because I'm looking at this motor and now I'm, I, have, I have taken a, a, a mill right approach. I go, okay, let me see if there's something obviously wrong and see if I would have said, this is an issue, let's address it. And once I saw the nine and the 10 misplaced, not that that caused an issue, but that's a very clear oversight because these, are, these cars are marked from the factory left and right and the cam caps are numbered all the way down. So when I saw that, I went, if something like that, that didn't get double checked, like guys, don't you think that's something that should be double checked? Like the numbers should match. And if they didn't, and it made me go, if that didn't match, which is a very obvious thing, what else am I seeing or not seeing? So then I said to myself, okay, let's say a valve job, new, new springs are 700 bucks. I'm sorry, new valves, 700 bucks or more. Springs, I already got, I got them for 300 bucks, new springs. So let's say you're into it for 1,000 bucks for springs and valves. And then what's a valve job? 1,500 bucks? Let's say they go through the whole thing, new stems, new seats, lap shit in, whatever you need to do. What is it? So I'm going to be into the, the head stuff for almost three grand. And then I'm like, if I got to have the bottom end looked at, that means they have to disassemble it, check the bearing clearances, just check everything's good, then throw new rings in it. So I got to buy the rings and then the labor for all that stuff. And then they have to then put it together and put their name behind it. So that's going to cost me another twenty-five to $3,500 to $3,000. So a motor that I paid ten for, put in, took out, checked stuff, is going to cost me another five to potentially get right. So obviously, I'm not happy about the whole situation, but that's okay. That's why I showed you guys the Illuminator build program. It is Ford OEM stuff. They actually took the processes, process assistance, so it says, of the Ford plant and said it has to be a sequence. And if it's not together, put together in a sequence and there are no checks and balances because the computer has checks and balances. And if you don't finish one sequence, you cannot move on to the next. And that's what made me go, brother, that's the way you should build a about 1,200 horsepower capable motor. Bus driver probably has $600,000 home loan in a house in some village. No, I'm some what's he talking about? Bro, obviously hired Rage House to help build this motor. I wouldn't trust Mustang Lifestyle to install an intake. I fuck up sending my motor to another shop and uh, 
to be built and clogged the cooling system, wasn't caught when installed. My main mechanic has to fix it made me buy a stock motor because it was bought. Dana Green says, are you decking the block? No, no, no. Also, so the head gasket. So let me ask you guys. And again, I don't know this, but what kind of head gasket would you put on if you were buying, if you're paying 10,000 bucks for a motor? You would think Kometic, you would think Felpro. And again, not that it's a bad gasket, but the stock gasket seems to be in this, a stock style gasket. Now, some people would say, what's the problem, Alex? Those gaskets are badass. I understand that and that's all fine and good. But what am I paying for? What am I paying for? And then when you see that the valve cover or the cam cover gaskets are OEM Ford style blue gaskets that stretch when they hit oil because it's a dissimilar it's a dissimilar material that the oil attacks and you cannot reuse it, it makes me go, why didn't I why didn't you just charge me an extra 30 bucks for the Felpro stuff? See, they're, they're, the stock gasket is MLS. It's multi-layered steel. It's, a, it's an MLS gasket, but it's a stock gasket because there's no part number on it and there's no markings on it. It just says left and right, and it measures 60 thousands. Took it to Jake. I go, Jake, measure this gasket for me. He goes, 60 thousands. I go, what do you think that is? He goes, looks like a stock head gasket to me. And I'm like, okay. So on top of the fact that I saw what I saw, and then the gaskets being used are stock gaskets, not the nice orange or black gaskets that do not get attacked by the oil. So this is what you need to do. As a customer, you need to get absolute details on a build. And if the motor builder is not willing to give you piston wall clearances, where the cams are positioned if you have a GT500 or they're locked, um gaskets like a line item i'm telling you you have to be that guy now so if a shop is not willing to give you a line item build and the sum of all of those parts plus tax and labor do not make sense you have to question everything that happens here unfortunately i trusted and that's my mistake and i should have been more thorough and that mistake will never happen again so that's why I tell you guys, if you are aiming for 1200, illuminator, illuminator, illuminator. Now that's the other thing, Ashley Fox. I'm old school. I like a little bit of a copper sealant on the gasket. Some people are gonna say that's stupid, da 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 da. Senior, on every coyote build he's put to get, put heads on, every single one has had that copper that copper spray stuff. Not a lot of it, but just enough to lubricate it and make everything good so it doesn't drag or anything, even if it, the engine is stuttered or not. And he goes, Alex, I live by this stuff. I am religious with this copper spray stuff. It just works. I saw none of that. And I'm like, is this like a methodology difference? Because I'm old school. And an engine is an engine and sealing a gasket is sealing a gasket, whether it's aluminum or aluminum, whatever. And I saw nothing there and I'm like, ah. Again, nothing happened with the head. But you know, there is a certain quality to a build that shows up when you disassemble stuff and you go, oh, these guys went above and beyond for this situation. GG says, I appreciate the knowledge, Alex. I would have never thought to check and get an itemized list. In my head, they're professionals, so they got it. I see it's not the case. It's like you have two damn to, to, to be damn near present while they build it. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest with you, GG. Not one engine builder is as professional as Ford. And I am not saying that because engine builders suck. Uh, you, you could be listening to my show right now and you go, fuck you, Alex. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You are not as good on the processes as Ford is. That's why Ford engines have a 30,000 mile warranty. There is a process, even though it's stamped and could chunk a chunked out, I trust a stock motor up to a thousand horsepower if it's studded than your built motor because the processes to get everything built are super dialed in by Ford. With you, you just know. You're probably smoking a cigarette as you're assembling the motor. 
Ash falls in. Eh, no big deal. It's carbon. No big deal. It's just a little fucking ash. Call it lubricant. You take the hose out. You spray it down. If that would have been done at Ford, if someone was smoking at Ford and ash fell into like the bore and you just blew it out with a hose, boop, assembly line stops, take that engine out, put it as a second, install a new engine, start the process again. That engine is not going to get warranty. What do you mean? I blew it out. It's fine. I don't care. The process has a variable. And if there's a variable, like nowhere in the process does it call for ash in the bore. So how about you take this out of the assembly line because we're warranting these things. That's why I tell you guys, stock motor, stock motor, stock motor. Maybe in 10 years, engine builders will know how to build the proper Coyote race motor. I love my high compression illuminator boost today, Wheeler says. They do sell a boost application, low compression one, though. I wouldn't get that one because you need like double the boost to make the power to, to get the car going. Ford knows their engines are better than anyone else's. They designed the damn thing. Or Ford knows their engine better than anyone else. Why the hell wouldn't they use Cometic Head Gasket? They are cheap insurance for your company's name and reputation. When I removed the cylinder head, I was hoping to see a race-oriented aftermarket gasket in there. And when I didn't, I went, now, name me a company that doesn't stamp their part number on, this, on the gasket. Like Cometic, if you want to reorder the gasket, they have it somewhere on the gasket. Or there's a little there's a little insignia or their little name on the on the corner of the gasket, right? Maybe I'm wrong. But this had no markings. And Senior was like, what do you mean it had no markings? I go, Senior has no markings. There's no marking. He goes, dude, dude, it's got to have a mark or a part number because how would you know what to order if, how would you know what to order if you don't know what that what's in there? I go, right, I just see an L and an R. It just says left and right. He goes, then that's a stock head gasket. And I'm just like, ah, fuck me. Maybe some homeboy went to Texas Speed. <laughs> Ford is a full production facility. Engine, would you sleeve your 5.8? It's already sleeved. My, my, my 5.8 was built by NPR first, and it lasted for four or five years being raced. No issue. The chain that broke was because of a guide pin, not because of a bad chain or the the guide pin that holds the follow the the, the cam uh, sorry the chain the chain follower the guide or whatever you want to call it. The pin broke, chain stretched, broke secondary chain, sacaba el party. Bill said he was waiting for business so he could hone the block to fit them properly. He has to know what PTW uh, is, and if he doesn't, he just chuck new pistons in without honing. Uh, I, I don't know. What head gaskets did you ask and pay for? That, again, that's the problem, Robo Style. As a non-well-versed person in engines, you don't know what to ask for, right? You say, uh, build here. Build me this. Like, I wish I knew what came out of them. I wish I knew what gasket came out of this car because I can't imagine it was a stock head gasket. But again, it's stock, but that doesn't mean it's bad. It just makes me go, why wasn't like a badass gasket put in there? Facts. Parts fall on the floor, use a new part. The stuff they throw out at the plants is crazy. Homeboy took your money and ran. I, I don't know about that. I just know that I just know that I'm not um I'm not happy. I'm not looking to blast, put them on blast, but once once I tally everything up and, and present a bill, I'll know what I'm dealing with once I say I expect you to cover either half or three quarters of this and if he doesn't it's all good it's all good it's all good uh, process control plan is the law at manufacturing plants and it's detailed exactly what should be done and what is the outcome to doing this and how often it should be done how many tubes of RTV was used on the keyway quite a bit I would check pistons and rods too at this point they're probably stock no 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 that I did I actually flipped it and look and it's got my beefy ass fucking rods in there and it's got new pistons who makes them i have no fucking idea who makes these pistons uh because um let's just say nobody in florida uses them anymore that tells you something um yeah timing chain guys exactly i got mls head gasket from texas speed for my ta and even they have a part number Ten and a half thousand, ten and a half thousand dollar pistons, or at least their element one fifteen, right? Imagine it wasn't timed right either. That would be him trying to screw up as much as possible. See, I don't know that that happened. 
I don't know that the timing marks were proper or not. I know one thing. This car felt lazy down low. Now, that could be a byproduct of the valves. But when I was just cruising this thing, like, this doesn't feel peppy. I remember when it had a, a Turbo 400, you just touch the gas. This thing was, whoa. But maybe it's because of the converter and, and how everything else went. But when I got a stick shift in it and started driving it around, I'm like, it doesn't feel peppy at all. Alex just wanted someone to do right by him. And obviously that's not what happened. And that's all. That 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 is a full stop. That's exactly what happened. And I'm okay with that. Um, I just want to keep harping on it. But I wanted to show you the, the assembly process of an illuminator. I can guarantee at this horsepower level, again, let's say 1300 and under, absolute no name your favorite motor builder has the process like Ford does. So if you're going to pay X amount for an illuminator or X amount for a built engine by homeboy, I'm going to buy an illuminator. Uh, if I remember correctly, he said there were Wiseco pistons. Okay. I would have had some sent back some old pistons for proof they were changed. Oh, you know I'm going to ask for those pistons back, right? This ain't over. Those pistons, I hope, didn't end up anywhere. Hey, keep those pistons around. They got to come back. They're not yours. They're mine. So those pistons have to come back to me. Because if you use them on another project, it's going to be problems. Those are my pistons. Um... This whole ordeal sounds a lot like some shops I've seen where you aren't paying ten to twenty thousand for the work. You're paying for the name, um, Ben. I don't know. I just know that that name has been thrown around. They've accused us of tuning like shit, and I'm just like, I'm good. And not many Florida guys even use Homeboy. Imagine being based in Florida and Florida guys don't use you would you part it out and put an illuminator i can't put an illuminator on a gt500 unless i change to a coyote firing order and a coyote harness and all that shit and it I, what power adder am i going to put on it i'd have to find like a department of boost kit shove the four and a half liter whipple on it or the two uh, or the uh, 2650 retrofit it with some bullshit find a fiat system no 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 no, no. a gt500 deserves a, a four valve style motor uh frank i'm moving to florida can i be roomy with you uh your old pistons are already in another customer's engine they better not be because i didn't see anywhere that it said minus 500 600 800 bucks for your pistons no 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 no. and he'll hear this because people report back to him those pistons are mine you ship them shits back absolutely um, putting an Illuminator on a GT500 is like putting a B58 in an M3. I don't even know what that means. Your new pistons were also someone else's at one point. <laughs> you pay for what you get. That's why I own Superco. Oh, you pay for it. Imagine getting beat. Imagine getting beat by a 10R80 ESS car. You pay for what you get. That's why I own supercars. Could you imagine being such a pompous cunt like this guy to say that and think it doesn't sound completely douchey and know he'll get ass fucked by an ESS 10R80 car in 85? Could you imagine? Uh, Pissin should have been in the crate. Yeah, nothing was in the crate. One of the things I learned years ago, whenever I had a shop do work, I want my old parts, bushing, gaskets, and all. Oh, I'm gonna ask for all that shit back. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write an email. I'm gonna say I would, I would like my pistons back and every part that was do ha having to do with my car. And if he comes out with some shit like, oh, if you've talked so much shit, I'm sorry, only one of us is out ten thousand bucks here, and it's not you. Oh, I hope you get the car at this point. I don't think it's worth selling anymore. Honestly, potential border migrant scammer. <laughs> it's not worth selling. I, I just have too much. I have $100,000 into the car. To sell it for sixty dollars and lose forty. dollars Fuck that. Um, it's taking a lot of self-control not to flame this dude on all his social media. I'm not. I'm, uh, no, don't. I don't want you guys to do anything like that. Please don't because it's going to look like it's coming from me. This is my deal. This is my ordeal, and I don't want you guys flaming homeboy. Let him do him. Let him post his stuff. I'm good. I'm simply done, and I want my old pistons back, and I want to move on from this whole situation, and I want to be compensated after it's all said and done properly. And if nothing, none of that happens, that's okay. I'm still not going to go and talk shit. All I have to do, regardless, the recommendation is the most powerful thing I have. Um, I'm sure he asked for discounts on his supercars. Pistons are gone one way or another. Oh, I get. I better get some piston. 
I better get something in the mail. Um, he again changed his name on one day he's Jay Rubin, then it's Jay Walker. Yeah, it's weird. He does this weird thing where he changes his name. Maybe people know the name Jay Walker and they go, shut the fuck up. And, oh, who's Jay Rubin? And they're like, oh, it's a new guy. And they're like, no, no, it's the same guy. <laughs> He sold your Pistons on Facebook Marketplace. He'll bring up the discount bet on it. I, 700 bucks? 700 bucks. No. No. That does, the motor does not work. The motor I receive does not work. I had to disassemble everything again. Discount means fuck all. To be honest, I, have, I hate build motors in general. Uh, says Marcus M. Doesn't matter who built them. Just so many variables, inconsistencies, and inferior practices compared to the factory. I live 30 minutes from the shop. Let me know what's up free of charge. Nah, dude, I'm, again, that's crazy. Yeah, no, no no, need to flame. No need to be stupid. I am not calling on the Amory to do anything. I actually am doing, I'm telling you guys to do the opposite. Just take my experience as a learning lesson for your build going forward. Go, okay, you know what? He went through this. So now I know who not to use and what to ask for when it comes time to build the motor. Tell me every piston to wall clearance. Tell me every single little thing. Show me what gaskets you bought, your price, the jobber price, and then the markup and blah, blah. I want it. I want a fucking, I want war and peace, a big pamphlet in the crate when the engine shows up about every single aspect of this build. And if you are not willing to provide that, I'll go somewhere else. What if homeboy's already a flamer? What's he talking about? I thought he, I remembered hearing you say, track your shit, track your shit to get it done. Don't know what he's talking about. I had TK and built my Steve 4.6 text kit. I'm so nervous it's not any good. They even refused to stud the crank and said it's pointless. Wow. Okay. I appreciate you sharing some good info. I hope more likes come from this podcast. Does your 5 engine even have a serial number on it after being built? My LM engine has a permanent laser edge plate. No. Spun out at the track, bounce off the rev limiter, shifting from three to four, save the car, but lost oil pressure. New OPGs or new engine? Lost oil pressure? You probably you probably either you lost it, you probably had an OPG failure if they were stocked. If you bounced it off the rev limiter and it says spawn it at the track, bounced it off the rev limiter on the three four shift, 110 miles an hour, save the car, but lost oil pressure, you probably killed the oil pump gears. Did you have a video of the build? Did you have a video at his of the build? Not of the build, but of the disassembly. That's why I'm buying a Chevy Performance Motor buying built with Chevy warranty and it'll hold 1,300 horsepower. Honestly, I think the aftermarket manufacturers understand something about the aftermarket. The motor builders that are out there that aren't like, again, I even, I even hesitate to say something like Noonan or I don't know anything about Nelson Racing Engines or... Um, any LME or any of those guys. And then they, again, they might be great. But I can't say that they have a similar process like the OEMs have because they have billions of dollars to do R&D and <sighs> refine the engine building process. So if GM Performance Motors is like, bro, we're going to have performance assembly solutions because they're set up a certain way. Make, build, offer, test, and warranty performance motors and we tack on an extra three or four thousand bucks on top of that and you as the customer can go i have the peace of mind that this gm performance crate engine or ford racing ford performance crate motor i can flog it and if anything happens out of the ordinary they got me so you're overpaying for the process the vetting the build quality the 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 and the warranty so maybe you guys go i can't afford that then you can't afford to race i luckily can afford to race and this is uh a byproduct of racing you deal with someone who maybe in their mind did a good job assembling this motor but then the outcome is different i wouldn't trust them to rebuild it again that's crazy talk like that's crazy talk imagine there is a process failure you're going to send it back and hope that the process gets rectified what if there's another process failure and another issue happens who is going to look stupid not them it'll be me that's not normal procedure how can you rake in gobs of cash for a product that's half-assed and keeps running 
But he literally did everything I asked, plus bonus trace techniques and even adding extra oil management and solid dowels on the mains next to the studs. I don't know what he's talking about. Had tons of miles on my eight second passes on Real Street S550 built by RPG. Heard it because of something I did. And RPG definitely went above and beyond. Okay. Uh, cool story. I still don't recommend any aftermarket motor builder that under 1300 horsepower. Again, guys, there's a big asterisk here. Under 1300 horsepower. Above that, there's a hand, there's like two that I say have street engines, meaning water running through the block. This M1 dry deck shit, not a street car. Just because your car has headlights, just because your car looks like a street car, but it has no water running through it, that right there is my definition of a street car. You cannot drive it on the street. It has no coolant in it. That's probably the best way to vet what a street car is. You got your running M1? Yup. Does it have coolant in it? No, not a street car. As a business owner, I would refund fully. I understand shops have overhead, but not your problem. I'm, I'm going to see what it costs to fix it, put it in. It's going to be a while, but I intend, and this is my official notification because it'll get back to him. I fully intend on getting compensated. If you don't compensate me, I can't do anything. Obviously, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to um, litigate. I'm not going to sue. I'm not going to do any of that stuff. I'm just going to be like man to man. I got a product that does not work. If I get it fixed, we find an issue, fix it, and the car runs well, I expect compensation. Sorry. That's the only way it'd be okay in my book. And if I get compensation, I would let you guys know. He did right by me. I still wouldn't recommend him. Even the robots and exoskeletons have at less chance of making a mistake on a stock motor than humans in a shop. Your recommendation goes farther than you think, Alex. If someone asks for an engine builder, us the subscribers are not recommending that engine builder either. Great point. Let's look at a little screenshot here. I have 518 people on right now. Uh, only 243 likes, so obviously I have like 250 haters. Of those 520 people that are listening to the show right now, those guys are in forums. Those guys are in Facebook Marketplace. Those guys are in groups. Those guys are in meets. Those guys are everywhere. 500 people in the Ford racing community are now listening to me say, I'm having this issue. So those 500 plus people are going to go, bro, Alex had this issue with this dude and I'm, I, I, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do this. I wouldn't do that. And that just like that, that's pretty powerful. So now it, let's say homeboy does right by me, meaning I would not give you the chance to do it again, but I get compensated monetarily. I would say, Guy, guy did right by me. I still wouldn't recommend. The 500 plus people go, bro, Alex didn't have a good outcome, but homeboy paid him back a little. So that looks good. We'll see. Funny shit I read here tonight was Turvy talking shit on the Fox. By the way, did you guys see the video of the of Hush Money's motor going into Fox body? That video did so well initially because my channel's not huge, but... To get 5,000 people to look at that that video in the in the first 12 hours was huge. And the Viper, and the Supra, and the Evo, and the CTS V2, and the Celine single turbo car. Now, the Viper he offered to let me borrow it and drive it one day, so I'm gonna take him up on that, but I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm a little afraid to drive that car because it's so clean, not because it's fast or whatever. It's just so freaking clean. <clears throat> I feel if I even get dust on it, I'm fucked. Aren't engines made mostly out of metal? Yeah, that's a wear item. Just my question, who, just my question is, who do we trust to send an engine to rebuild or build anymore? Who in the United States is left to build a 1200 horsepower engine reliably? Based on my experience, Jason, Nathan Johnard, nobody. Now people are going to say, well, I have experience with this guy and he's great. I have experience with that guy and he's great. Guess who built the motor on Hush Money when it was a coyote? Do you guys know who built the motor that's in that beautiful Fox body? Who in the chat knows who built that motor? 
I bet you guys have never heard of the person. Now, the reason I said this guy is legit is based on his knowledge of cars and his attention to detail. And I saw him built that motor in front of my face. No, nope, not Joe at VMP. Nope, not Ford. The Hush Money Motor was a built manly molly piston, manly rod, LM sleeved, but the assembly was done by a employee at VMP named Mike Whedon, who is a current employee and tuner at VMP. Legit, legit. Built it, put it together, had no issue. No issue. And this is just some guy you've never heard of. Again, a Ford Racing Power Pack, Manly Power Pack, or whatever it's called, which Manly Molly, Gen 2 heads ported with Pack 1234Xs, stock crank. And he put it together. Dude, I've had no issue, no issue. China Kid number 399 built it. Jake, Andrew Sheridan, LM, Mike Whedon. Thank you, Mike Whedon. Ford, Chuck, Donnie, Craig, Jake, PBH, Ron, Steve, Mark. <laughs> Great. What what's the shop? What the shop should have done is pay for you to ship the motor back. Bra whoa, whoa! You would trust the shop after seeing what you saw in the disassembly. You would you would after seeing what I saw, you would trust to send it back to the shop. I'm not that stupid. It still won't look right to me. There's a partial refund. I get it, mistakes happens, but there's too many mistakes for it not to look like neglect. Neglect is where I draw the line, and again, I can't prove that. Like, if you were to go in a court of law and try to prove neglect, you could not do it. Because you can't prove neglect or intent or malintent or ill intent. All you can do is look at what's in front of you and go, okay, there are some things that I think are uh, of concern, and I'm going to have a third party check it out. But I cannot say he had ill intent, mal intent, or neglect. I just can't say that. Again, look, maybe, let's say you built something and you put it together and you went, ah, oh, this thing is perfect. I vetted it. I did everything I could to make it as best as possible. But the, your best is not good enough. And I think that's probably what happened. I think that's what, and again, guys, I am not just talking about me. And I, I'm not gonna drag anybody else into this, but there are three other examples of this out there, out there in the wild. Three other examples out there in the wild that made me go, okay, maybe the 5458 five, stuff's different. And it, similar stuff and we're like and again i'm not gonna make anyone talk about something they don't want to talk about why not have l, l, l and m build it because <laughs> because l and m is not l and m like l and m was five years ago i just had my friend tune his bolt on gt500 with lun it's flying now i wrote in it last night oh it didn't blow up so stevie wonder built the gt500 motor i only trust my pedal extender well built product thank you alex it's a two by four it's perfect if you have influence believe that i mean I have some influence, but I am not telling people that I, my influence is going to be used in a negative way. Maybe this is a negative way of selling my influence. Like, hey, but again, one of us. Okay. Let's look at it from a, a customer perspective. Let's say you don't have any mechanical experience. Right? And you take it to, let's say, Danny Bill. I say, Danny Bill, do me a favor. I broke a secondary timing chain yesterday, making a pull. Pull this motor, send it to somebody, and we're going to have it built. Danny Bill goes, cool. That'll be six hours of labor or, or 10 or eight, whatever long it takes. Let's say it's eight hours of labor at a $100 shop rate. Let's do some math here. So now you're the customer. You're like, okay, 800 bucks. Shipping is about 350 or so. And it gets to the builder. So now you're into it for 1150 bucks, And nothing has happened. Motor gets there. They you, you talk, you do this and this and that. And then you get a $10,000 bill. Let's say, let's say a $10,000 bill. 
boom, 10,000 bucks. So now you're at 1150. So 1150, now the motor has to go back in and it takes Danny Bill another day. So let's say that's eight hours. So now you're at uh, 10, 5, 11, 11, uh, let's say 11,000, 11,900. Right, let's make it a nice flat number with taxes. 12,000 bucks. 12,000 bucks, right? Put it in, and again, you're willing to pay for this. You put it in, and it lasts you 300 miles or so. On the first wall pull, it sucked dick. And then you go, wait, I, I, I have to diagnose this. And the guy goes, just send me the motor back. Excuse me? Okay, so now that's another 800, 800, or 800 shipping, 350. Come back, put it in. No. Now that is a nightmare scenario for a customer who is just forking over, and that's why projects after a broken motor take a year. Danny Bell takes it out, motor goes out, the customer is like, bro, I can't afford this twice. And then the motor goes back in and then your trust is like minimal because you had a motor that lasted a, minute, a little amount of time. You're paying Danny Bill to take it out, put it in. And it gets to the point where you're just like, I can't afford this anymore. I might have to sell the setup because I, I just can't. And that happens all the time. Instead of, let's say you're under a thousand, you could just say, Danny Bill, stick a, stick a stock motor in it. Motor out, motor in. You know it has Ford OEM quality parts in it. And it lasts a long time. Um, what did you think about the all-wheel drive SI50? He did a lot of work, huh? Sorry if I missed it. Just tuned in. I haven't really talked about it that much because it's NA. But I think it's super cool, super impressive, great. But again, I need to see that thing launch hard on a... I want to see that car cut a better 60 and stay together before I start going... Look, it's Billy Badass. He made it work, okay? So he, he it's an engineering marvel, but I still wanted to see it perform. Thanks for the content knowledge. Con content and knowledge says Ryan Parrot. You got it, bro. Thanks for the money. Money's always nice. If my boss ever, engine level, yeah, let's go. I'd go Illuminator. Your story makes me wary of any engine builder and take my story as a teaching moment for everybody out there. Do not, if you're under 1,200, buy a motor from any aftermarket engine builder. Sorry if it cuts into your sales. Illuminator or a stock motor all day, every day. Referring to my previous statement, heads, cam, and reluctant wheel. <laughs> <laughs> Why is the wheel so reluctant? Is Does it have a past history with something that makes it reluctant? Like, does it have an issue with something and it has a, a checkered past and it has a, it's a bit of a reluctant wheel? I think he meant reluctor wheel. Referring to my previous statement, heads cam and reluctant wheel are engine builders negligence. Alex should have been notified in my opinion, I'm just saying. Mike Dino tuned my Illuminator, good dude for sure. Uh, and all of the exact reasons why I went Illuminator. Alex, those pistons coming back out after seeing what you saw, it seems like you'd want to at this point. I'm not saying the pistons are coming back out, but they're gonna, the, the short block might have to get sent out to have it looked at by an engine builder that I trust, which is like two. Would you have more confidence in a Roadrunner or Predator to run hold a thousand horsepower? Predator. Predator's built a little better. It's just a better block. How much horsepower can a factory connection point exhaust handle to do a three inch connection point? What the fuck's he talking about? Y'all hit this like and it's a good uh, chat. Reluctor wheel, it won't turn. It's so reluctant, reluctant wheel. Quick analogy. If you had a manufacturer, Lemon Law buyback, would you buy another vehicle from the manufacturer? Thank you so much alex what if you put in a hesitant wheel that says <laughs> <So it's> only rears <laughs> i like the reluctant wheels um reluctant wheel you snug the motor build blues to a t you sn <laughs> you sung the motor build blues to a t stock motor lives a long life build motor gets installed and the issues arise customer x can't afford the time and money to keep going car gets sold illuminator Illuminator, Illuminator if you're a Coyote guy, stock if you're a GT500 guy, and sell it. Don't even trust the guy who tears down an engine with a DeWalt drill. Ha! Dude, I can't believe you said that. Oh, my God. Dude, I was looking at that, and I'm like, I have Milwaukee drills and impacts and ratchets and shit. And I'm like, why does homeboy got a DeWalt 
Like I get it. I got Harbor Freight engine stand and Harbor Freight lift table and a and a, and a, and a, a, a O'Reilly's or Oregon uh, engine hoist. But all my power tools are Milwaukee. So when he, and Matt Angerman says, don't ever trust a guy who tears down an engine with a DeWalt drill. My boy, I love you. I love you so much. I, I can't believe you noticed it. Like, I noticed it right away. I went, DeWalt, huh? <laughs> Imagine you show up to a work site and you're a millwright and you whip out your Ryobi or DeWalt tools. People are going to blow. Get the fuck out of here. Get out of my site. If your shit ain't red in Milwaukee, get the fuck out of here. Alex says, now a reluctant engine buyer. Thanks for having the balls to advise people on the right move, regardless of any blowback. Um, Realist YouTube channel. Okay, I am not making any friends saying this. And again, you could you you could look at your and your favorite motor builder, your favorite motor builder right now, and he's gonna go. Alex doesn't know what he's talking about. He's full of shit. He don't know da 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 da. I tune every day 40 to 50 cars. I see different engine builders of all walks of life give you excuse after excuse after excuse as to why the built motor lasted a thousand miles. When the stock motor at the same boost lasted years and years and years. Oh, maybe you didn't hit the plus button. Maybe you got your this wrong. Maybe an injector got stuck. Maybe this, maybe that. The stock motor goes in, starts, what? And it's fine. So my Fairmont is always going to have either a stock short block or a stock long block when it gets running for the rest of its life. And if I want to go quicker, I'll make it lighter. Or throw a big block Chevy in it. Hey Alex, what pulley combo would you do on a V7 to make A50 wheel? Uh, E85 Gen 2 through a manual. Um, E85 Gen 2 through a manual V7 JTB. I would say a 3.3 should do it. A 3.3 pulley should do it. Uh, 8 850 or okay, a 3.3 because I don't want it to be smaller because of belt slip and maybe a 10 percent, 10 percent and a 3.3. Should really zing that sucker. But Alex, you told us to stay away from red stuff. Hilti is the industrial shit. You're right, Hilti. Some people will say DeWalt is cheaper and does the same thing. Can I run my 18 GT ESS 120 pulley with 91 octane? Yes, but I would really... Is it a G3 or a G2? Can I still no-lift shift 700 horsepower 3160? I would never no-lift shift. This channel is not a uh, fan of no-lift shifting. But Alex, it goes faster no-lift shifting. No, it doesn't. Been a while since we've done a comment of the week. Dude, the reluctant wheel might have done it. Alex, what do you think about the new 6.8 liter Mustang? I love him. I love 2000 MCR. If there is a consistent person on this whole chat, it's him with the fucking stupidest question on the planet. Can I be Frank says, 91 octane is brain damage. Understand, can I be Frank? California and Arizona, that's all they got. I expect you're now buying two, ca two new cams as well. Again, I'm going to send the cams over to Homeboy and said, what do you think? And he's going to go, I probably need two new exhaust cams on this thing. Ugh, ugh. I only trust the guy in the mirror and just barely. Maybe you go reluctant tune. Um, all day long, says DeWalt DCF 891 all day long. Pulled an entire front suspension apart and hardly used any battery life plus 800 foot pound of torque. Break with you. Okay, cool. You're going to get laughed out of the fucking construction site. There's a reason why I built my Gentry short block. I'm using all OEM parts. He holds cylinder walls and drywalls. <laughs> Stop it. I'm not here to flame homeboy. Tools, DeWalt is funny. I'm doing a Gen 2 new edge swap. Do you have supercharger for sale? I don't. <laughs> I mean, if I had a supercharger, it'd just be a head unit. Dill Space says, and what about the Lime Green Harbor Freight toolbox? Probably dent sale too. <laughs> oh, please, guys, don't flame the dude. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfuckers are going back to the video and nitpicking all the tools. Uh, that's the problem with this chat. <sighs> Guys. It, we are like refined trolls here. You understand? <laughs> we, we are super refined trolls. And... I understand if an engine builder in the future says, I never want to work with Alex because the people he's got on his chat 
like guys, when you see a post, what happened when what what was the main thing on the post when Cooper Baghetti had you know who on? When Cooper Baghetti had Mod Motor Mustang dude Justin Young and the other dude. How many people had the hashtag FLKA in the fucking comment section? We hot we have a crazy reach on this channel. And maybe the people that don't listen live listen on a replay and they're frothing at the mouth supporters of this channel. So please understand that if you do right by me, you look good. Look at the people that sponsor the show. Calamer said, Alex, dude, a lot of my business is because of your chat. I will fucking build a transmission for free on your ZR1. <laughs> okay, Rami Zaidan. Poured it. He gave me a blower. Call performance. Ported my blower for free. Okay. Bam. Sponsor. Uh, Rami Zaidan hooked me up with two inch fucking primary headers for the ZR1. DNA High Performance gave you guys stuff and discounts. Race Motive is in Russia. <laughs> Ultimate header. I'm hoping one day does a giveaway. I'm going to hit him up. Yo, let me get a set of headers. Give away a set of headers to somebody. But I'm going to hit him up. I'm going to hit up all the sponsors. PMAS gave you guys stuff. I have giveaways for PMAS. So look, these people look good if they hook up the people on this chat. So if you have done wrong by me, or if something you put together that you thought was right ends up being wrong, and I don't trust you rightfully so to get it right, compensation is coming or not. That's okay. Wait, Alex, you have to go to Nut Riders, Engine Builder. You get what you paid for. Boots were strapped. Exactly. I know let's shift my DCT every day. When Turby gonna put all wheel drive on the new edge, Globaddy, Globaddy, okay. Globaddy Goop welds on the transfer case incoming. I had to read that a certain way. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to say it, but I'm definitely going to leave that up there so y'all could read it. Race motors, get what you... <laughs> oh, shit. Like, and he didn't even fuck... I mean, he did fuck with me. Boy, that was one of the... Both. Like, year in review, that was one of the best streams I've ever done when I went all in. I'm telling you, I listened back to that stream. So badass. How about that Parch Farm notch? Dude, the Parch Farm sold me the notch under 6,000 bucks. 1074, all I did was throw wheels and tires and a, uh, I cleaned up the engine bay a little bit. Dude, and they don't pay a, I said, y'all don't gotta pay shit for a long time. You guys are good, you you hooked me up. I got the VMP too, cause of you, Alex. <laughs> I, got, I got a Gen 3, <laughs> when, when I was there or now? I got a Gen 3 truck like in my 16 Mustang with ARP headsets and fresh and heads. I circuit raced the car and it's been reliable as hell. Just keeping it simple and easy. Exactly. Um, the people at PMAS are super dope. Working with me on solutions for my swap. Love it. Um, I have a 27 GT menu shield. I have a 2017 GT menu shield and it has a tune on it. I have a 2017 GT menu shield. Can anyone? But I have no tuner. How can I have it tuned? Or can I just buy another tuner and have an attendant? <laughs> Wait, what? I have a 2017 GT menu shield. Can anyone decipher? Are you having a stroke, sir? Sir, are you having a stroke? Uh, I don't know what's happening there. That PMAS fender wall is super nice. That time's mint deal. Do you think because of the, all the real shit you talk in the game, homie looked at it and teach this guy a lesson? Knowing it was built like shit, <laughs> take your money kind of thing? No, no way, no way, no way. I think he had all the proper intentions, but the, um, when he put it into practice, <laughs> it just didn't come out like, uh, like it should have been. And a carb, exact. Oh, dude, remember the carburetor company, AED? Remember that? When I said, hey, AED, fuck me over. Because they didn't replace the float. Like, how do you not check the fucking float? And I simply said, look, they didn't, they, they didn't, they didn't check the float. I paid three hundred dollars for a carburetor rebuild, only for it to flood my motor, 
Oh, oh, you must have put some shit on the seat. No, bro. The floats are adjusted all the way to the bottom, and it's still overflowed. I said, let me take it apart. And the float was full of gasoline. So someone at AED, carburetor, hit me up on email and says, if I ever hear you talking shit about my company again, I go, what the fuck are you going to do? Show up at my door. See what happens. Stop. I got fucked on that deal. 300 bucks down the drain. So what did I do? I spent another 700 bucks on a Brawler Series carburetor. Boom. Done. Works. Guy got mad at me because I said, AED fucked me. You should have hit me back. Why? You're a carburetor building company and you didn't check the flow? I'm good. Fuck Chase, stop it. I'm gonna I'm gonna pass out. Yeah, dude. I mean those streams were literally the best ones ever. Turvy Air Freshener gotta come back. Which stream was it so I can rewatch? Please, please, it's named appropriately. Dude was gonna come to your door. I'm like, you're gonna come to my door? You're gonna leave pretty fucked up. Stop it. Should have opted for the resonated deleter. What's a menu shield? Johnny just came across the border. Uh hi English. We'll be better next live show. Menu shield protects the reluctant wheel. <laughs> Oh, good stuff. Hey, Alex, um, I want to make 100 rubble horsepower on a 16 P1 SC. What pulley should I run? Take the Pro Charger and throw it in the fucking trash. Get an ESS with a 110 millimeter E85 return soft fuel system, 1,000 cc injector, and be a happy cat. Or whatever on your P1 SC can generate 14 pounds of boost. Part from for the win. They sold me ID 1300s for $500. Part from is the best. I got into Coyote Swap idea because of PBH and you, Beach Up. They wanted a gunfight. Uh, what the fuck are they going to do? Definitely not showing up at your door. Not not anymore. Because all I got to do is spray the area. I don't even got to be accurate. <laughs> I don't even got to be accurate. I like how he threatened me as if as if I'm scared. Stop. Alex, you are what the aftermarket needs. Your experiences have to have... Your experiences happen to the little guys every day. We need more influencers to es- expose crappy aftermarket quality. Now... Shout out to Justin Dugan. Tomorrow at 3 p.m., I'm going to air the interview. It's an hour and a half. I I wasn't expecting him to say the shit he said. But, you know, let's be honest for the last couple minutes here. There is no other show like this that keeps it quote-unquote real. I am not for sale. I'm not bought and sold by anybody. The people that support the show are right here, the sponsors, and these are the people you should buy shit from because they're real ass motherfuckers that aren't scared to let me talk my shit and support the show in a monetary fashion. You guys understand that when I say something, it comes from personal experience. I've owned a Gen 1, a Gen 2, a Gen 3, manual, auto, I've raced, I've done this, I've done that, I've done the NA stuff, I've owned a truck, I've owned a GT500 that has blown up and now I'm in the middle of all this built motor hell so that you guys don't get fucked on it. Now what Justin Dugan said in the video tomorrow is going to be something that you guys have to realize the strength or the power of this show can have potentially. American Muscle is a juggernaut. It's a massive company. And I, as a dumb little guy that had no influence in the game, called them out on some bullshit they were talking about in 2015. Apparently, it struck a nerve. And Justin Dugan talk goes into detail about like, hey, rightfully so, you gave us some feedback. And I thought, I'm just some Puerto Rican in Massachusetts that doesn't matter. But guess what? It made it all the way to the top to them and they were like bro we got to change our approach we got to do this because we need to have credibility credibility in the game and in this world this muscle car tuning aftermarket space there are no real motherfuckers everyone is bought sold they 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 they, they push products that are known to be shit just because that person provides them stuff like, there are people that literally will run apart on their car, not because it's good, it's because the sponsor is begging them to, to make it seem good, and they'll go out of their way and massage things to say it's a favorable item when they have millions or thousands or hundreds of thousands of followers, and they're lying to you. 
And this show, I'd like to think, is, is as real as it gets. Justin says, the world would be a better place if people called out on their shit. It's called accountability and society is lacking in this department. Not stealing content like Stang Douche or Stang Douche. Hey, Mr. Alex, dropping in to say hello. Peaky out of design, one of the better shops out on the West Coast. Excited for that interview tomorrow. Justin knows his shit when it comes to the Coyote world. And tomorrow, you will see a different side of him. The dude is legit. No, the, the, the interview is not on Patreon first. I should do that, but honestly... Boy, you know what? I might do that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that because you guys are paying a 15 buck a month nut. So I might make it live for the members first because it'll be tomorrow at 3. And I don't want it to go into the void. You know what I mean? I don't want the interview because it's Friday. People are checking out for New Year's. They're they're trying to get their side chick down pat so they can fuck them. And you know, still hang with the family the following day. You know, it's, it's all this crazy stuff. So... I might do the Patreon stuff tonight. I might make it live tonight on Patreon. Or I will just provide the link on Patreon. But the problem is it's a members only thing. So it'll be kind of kind of on the funky side. So I'll do my best to get you guys the content, the paying public, the members and the Patreon guys might get it right after the show because I think that's the right thing to do. It's an hour and a half. It's a great listen. And then it'll be live for everyone else tomorrow at 3. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Thank you very much. We watched SpaceX launch a rocket. We saw an Illuminator get built. We talked about why illuminators are a better option based on the process that PAS in uh, Illinois has than any other motor builder under, let's say, 1,300 horsepower. Big Billy Badass stuff. Then you got to go out there and see what's going on and see who you trust to build your motor. But if you're under 1,300, illuminator all day, every day. Have a good rest of your week. Happy New Year. I will see you guys Sunday on New Year's Eve. I'll be there. I'll be there early. So we'll we'll talk then. But for those of you that I'll, we won't talk to, have a good New Year. Hopefully you spend it well. Don't do anything stupid because my family has a history of like crashing on New Year's Eve. So I'm staying inside that whole fucking day. But we'll talk on the peasant chat. So Patreon members, I'm going to try to get you guys the Justin Dugan interview now. And members, I'm going to try to get you the Justin uh, Dugan interview now for your listening pleasure. And then we'll talk about it Sunday. And then we'll go on and talk about some shit on Peasant Chat Sunday before New Year's comes around. Have a good rest of your night. See you guys later. Bye.